Good morning, YouTube. Welcome to the Reptile Barn. Have, to my mind at least, a really exciting video to shoot here. Uh, we have a box of snakes. Not a new box of new snakes, but just a box that we are holding some of our snakes in. And we have a tub with a scale. Uh, this box has six snakes in it. They're all females. All of them have at least the potential to breed this winter and lay eggs next year. They're all females that have never bred for us before. So we're very excited about this. Um, so we're going to wave them, see where they are um, heading into the fall. And hopefully we can get them up to size if they're not already. Or if they are, they'll keep eating, get nice and big. Anyway, just want to walk you through some new additions to the breeding colony here at the Reptile Barn. <laughs> Gorgeous Mystic Potion produced here at the Reptile Barn. Uh, daughter of Gandalf. Uh, she looks to me like she's probably already at her weight that we want. Well, we try and start breeding at 1500 grams. So I'm going to go ahead and plunk her in the box and then we'll show her off on the table for a minute before we move on. There we go. She is 1662 grams. Woohoo! So, we have a winner. First snake out of the box is already large enough to breed. And again, it's only August right now. She'll be, she'll be hopefully several hundred grams larger than this at the beginning of the breeding season. So she is golden. She's ready to go. Just look at this beauty. She's a real good snake. Never been a biter, never been, never been a bad eater. She's been great. She does have a little bit of a, that's just bedding up on her nose. It's not a, it's not a scab or anything like that. We do keep our snakes on cocoa, so they get little bits of cocoa on their scales sometimes. Um, but I think it's worth it because they seem happier on the cocoa. So that's Mystique. Back in the box. And I'm actually going to grab her sister. This is Galadriel. Uh, she is a Super Mojave, also daughter of Gandalf. Um, uh, the Super Mojaves are also called Blue-Eyed Lucys. She is 1,340 grams, so she is 160 grams shy. However, um, being August, as long as she stays on feed, which right now she's totally pounding rats, so hopefully she does stay on feed. She should also quite easily make breeding weight. Um, once they're eating medium rats, they they really put weight on quickly. Let's see if I can get her to pull back here. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, hold on, I've got a snake escaping over here. My camera woman is supposed to be watching the snakes in the box. I'm trying to aim the camera here. I know. <laughs> anyway, um, you might think... Wait, why is this called a blue-eyed Lucy? Why is this considered a white snake? It's clearly not white. This table is white. The snake is not white. And you are correct. <laughs> Most of the blue-eyed Lucys aren't quite white. Uh, you see, on, especially on the ones made from Mojaves, they have kind of a yellowish or creamish color to the back. The sides are pretty nice and white. And then the head has uh, that gray stamp on it. I love the gray head. I, I wish that you could get, for example, uh, the Russos, the Het Russos, or even the Lessers. They make much whiter blue-eyed Lucys, but they don't have that awesome gray head. I like the gray head. I wish that the yellow weren't there. So to me, the perfect would be, because I think the gray head just gives a cool contrast. and It gives a little pattern to the snake. Anyway, we've got some escapers over here. So that's Galadriel, blue-eyed Lucy. This is Shiara. Uh, she's a desert ghost, also produced here at the Reptile Barn, daughter of Greg, uh, Greg's daughter. <laughs> uh, just a desert ghost, nothing else going on here, but uh, she was so clean as a baby. We thought we had kept all the desert ghost females that we wanted, but we ended up selling one and keeping her instead. So uh, I really like this snake, nice and pretty. 
Uh, good color even as an adult, which is typical of the Desert Ghosts. Let's go ahead and weigh her. I don't think she's quite up to weight either, but she's close. Hey, little girl. She's just ready to cruise today. Oh, 1480. Woo. 1480. So she's practically there, guys. Come on, little girl. Now, we don't, uh, we don't super heavily feed here at the Reptile Barn. I've talked about that before. I'll put her down on the table so you can get another view of her. This is a recessive trait, by the way, Desert Ghost. She's also smashing rats. All these snakes that I'm pulling out are currently on feed. So high hopes that they'll uh, stay that way and get some more growth before breeding season hits. Anyway, we do not uh, feed very heavily. Uh, I don't want to mix up terms here. Some people will say, oh, I don't power feed. Well, to me, power feeding is when you kind of force extra rats down them by piggybacking them one after another. Uh, definitely we don't do that, <laughs> but we also just don't feed that heavily. So our snakes don't tend to get up to breeding weight in the you know, one to one and a half year range that some people seem to aim for. Most of our females are between two and a half and four years old when they seem ready to breed, uh, at least by weight and their basic appearance, and we're totally fine with that. Um, and that's ball pythons, by the way. And we're specifically talking about ball pythons. So yeah, there's Shiara, looking great, looking active. Put her away, pull out another. This is Queenie. She is a Butter Jungle Woma, 50% Poss Het Clown, 50% Poss Het Sunset. All right, picked her up in a, in a sweet trade with a friend of ours, Reese. Uh, anyway, she also does not look up to weight to me. Um, in fact, I think of the snakes I pulled, she's the smallest. To me, if she goes at all this coming season, she's going to be one of those uh, that we kind of use our year-round breeding in order to maximize her uh, growth. We don't want to breed her when she's you know, barely 1,400 grams or something like that. So what we would do is if she were, you know, if we get to November and we're starting to pair animals and she's only 1,400 grams, we will not start pairing her. We'll keep feeding her. And if she keeps feeding strongly throughout the winter and we get to February, March, and she's, you know, 16, 1700 grams and still eating great, we'll start pairing her. No problem. Um, and uh, if she doesn't, then we'll wait. So uh, that's kind of a benefit of year round breeding. Look at her sides. Look how just nice and reduced that bottom part is where the uh, alien heads just kind of open up and onto the belly. Nice and clean, very little muddling, very pretty snake. Um, let's get her weight, shall we? Oh, 1,200. 1,200 on the nose. So, not too bad. She's doing good. Um, and she's actually, she's actually a little older than uh, some of the snakes in here, but she just hasn't grown as quickly, and that's totally fine. She did go on a long fast. Um, those of you in the ball python world uh, may have heard that when they hit what I like to call their puberty, they fast. Sometimes an extended fast. Somewhere between 800 and 1200 grams or so, they just fast. Um, and it might even be some sort of you know, hormonal change, kind of like a, a, a puberty for the snake. I'm not sure, I, I don't know that, but uh, it's very, very common that when they hit that certain age, their feed response just goes away for a while. They take a break. Um, they come back out of it, you know, they get right back on feed, but uh, for several months, they just don't want to eat. Um, one cool thing about her, before I put her away, I don't think that she has paradoxing, but right here, you can see a very dark black thing, and over here, up here, farther towards the head, there's even more of it. Uh, and this one actually trickles down onto the sides of the snake as well. Not sure, here, let me turn it around so you can get better light for it. You see what I'm saying? Does the camera pick it up at all? Mm -hmm. Really cool, I, I don't know if that's part of her genetics or if that's just some paradoxing, but it's beautiful. So that is Queenie. I don't know if we said her name, but this is Queenie. 1744, plenty big. Whoop, whoop. This is T. Switty. She is a lavender albino, 
Um, so she was produced here at the reptile barn. However, <laughs> we purchased the mother uh, who was already gravid. And uh, it was from a local, a local breeder here. So we purchased the mom and we're told that there was a high likelihood that the mom was already gravid. Turned out she was, laid a beautiful clutch for us. So we ended up really scoring on that purchase because we ended up with all these babies. Um, but the breeder knew that she very well might be gravid, so she wasn't upset or anything. In fact, she was happy for us, but uh, yeah. So we ended up keeping a male and a female, and this is T. Sweetie, and she is now plenty big to breed, plenty old. Very happy with this big girl here. Um, relatively big girl. Lavender albino. So, and you can see that uh, the lavenders, they are different from the typical albinos, you know, the regular albinos. Up towards the head especially, her her white color is starting to turn. Um, it's slow, you know, it takes several years to really purple out a lot, but definitely not just a regular albino. Um, really beautiful snakes, and she is active, active, active. I don't think we're going to get great shots here, <laughs> but uh, that's okay. Beautiful snake. This is Freya. She is a leopard ivory. She's been on the vlog a lot because... Um, we purchased a male specifically for her, uh, and uh, we want to try and make some highway stuff, or freeway in the future. So again, uh, leopard ivory or leopard super yellow belly, right? Normally, ivories are, are pretty much pure white, however, the leopard really brings out some pattern, especially up towards the head. Beautiful, beautiful snake. Almost looks like a very, very low contrast highway, because of the white stripe down the back, a little bit of purple on the sides. Gorgeous animal. Um, now, she is just coming out of her little <laughs> sophomore slump as far as eating. She just started eating again for us after a very extended fast. I think she went six months without eating. But now she's eating again, which is great. Oh, see, she is t 1,082 grams. So she's another one that definitely will not be ready at the beginning of our typical breeding season. Um, she has the age that we like, but definitely not the weight. So if she doesn't put on weight quickly, she'll probably be held back an extra year. Or, you know, as I was saying before with the whole uh, year-round breeding, whenever she does hit a good healthy weight, then we would start her. But definitely not by November or December. It'll be, it'll be much later in the breeding season or even wait until the next breeding season. And that's totally fine. Um, it's a bummer because we don't, <laughs> long story, basically the male we got is either a gravel or a yellow belly. And until we breed him to a yellow belly, we won't know whether he is gravel or yellow belly. To prove him out, we got, we need to pair him with this female. Because if ivories come out of this pairing, then obviously he's a yellow belly. If highways come out of this pairing, obviously he's a gravel. He is ready to breed. But we don't really want to breed into a bunch of other females until we know whether he is gravel or yellow belly. So we're at a bit of a, we're having an internal debate, we're having a conundrum here, but we'll figure it out. And maybe we'll just wait uh, until, until she's also big enough to breed so that then we have a better idea of uh, what we're selling to people. I hate going on, you know, Morph Market or wherever and seeing these snakes that are sold as, it's either gravel or yellow belly. Well, that makes a big difference, right? Because if it's a yellow belly, it's not worth that much money. If it's a gravel, it's worth a whole bunch of money. Um, and it's not just a money thing. If it's a yellow belly, it can make these combos. If it's a gravel, it can make these combos. So we would really love for her to grow quickly, put on weight, breed, and lay eggs for us so that we can know with certainty what our male is. He's a GHI and Chi, hopefully gravel, right? But we won't push her. Whatever she... Whenever she's ready, she will she will go. Again, I'm trying to get them to hold still so you can get some shots of her, but it's not happening. <laughs> the, okay. the adults are much more confident than the babies. The babies, we set down, and they just kind of sit there frozen. The adults just want to cruise around. So uh, harder to get good camera shots, but uh, that's okay. Mm -hmm. At least they're not terrified. Um, yeah, so that is Freya. Really awesome snake. I love this girl. And... Uh, yeah, so we have some really awesome females ready to add to the breeding colony. 
Uh, this was the six of them that are closest. Obviously, we have more females growing up, but the, these were the six that are closest that had any shot of making it for this next breeding season, you know, this coming winter. So I uh, figured we'd just shoot a video, show them all off, talk a little bit about their genes and what kind of stuff we might make and all that good stuff. Um, uh, we might do another video about the males that we want to pair to them so we could then talk about the offspring. Let us know if you would be interested in seeing something like that. Um, I know that for those of you who are not ball python people, we try not to just make all of our videos about ball pythons because uh, you know we're reptile people, really, we're animal people. Uh, we love nature and all the different animals and plants and all that stuff, but uh, a huge part of what we do at the Reptile Barn is uh, breeding morphs of ball pythons. So we do show a lot of that on the vlog. I hope that doesn't get annoying. Um, I know some of you are all into ball pythons, so you're happy with it, but uh, we try to mix it up. Just so there's something for everybody. Um, I, the conflicts between different groups within the reptile hobby just make no sense to me. You know, people saying how, oh, I hate ball pythons. They're just trash and I want everything to be normals. I don't want morphs. Well, the morphs are beautiful. <laughs> so why would you, you don't have to buy them, but why are you going to be angry at other people for enjoying something in the reptile hobby? It just makes no sense. But uh, anyway, that, but you know, I should say there are ball python people who think that a snake is only worth anything. It's only worth having if it's a morph. I don't understand that either. Uh, that, that, to me, that's not even someone who is a reptile lover or an animal lover. They are just interested in strange, unique. They want to be seen as having something rare rather than just they love the animal. And so they want, you know what I mean? So everyone has issues, but I wish that reptile people would stick up for each other more because we're already kind of a put upon group. There's plenty of people out there that want us to not have reptiles. Um, so, and then there's a whole another group of people that think snakes are nasty and should just be squashed. So we really should stick up for each other a little bit better. Um, so we try and show a little bit of everything on the vlog just to show that, you know, we, yes, we love morph ball pythons. We, we've spent a lot of money on them. We've spent a lot of time on them. Uh, we work with a lot of morphs. But we also, oh, got, a <laughs> got an escaper here. Well, hello there, Shiara. Come here, cuteness. Right in the box. Bye bye. Anyway, so don't want to don't want to ramble on too much, but uh, please be 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 kind to other reptile people, even if they're not into the exact same reptiles as you. That is okay. It really is actually okay. Um, and thank you so much for your support of our videos. Uh, we love your comments. We love when people come over here to see the snakes and they're like, "Oh, I just saw your video about whatever," and we're like. You watch our videos? <laughs> so we really appreciate the support and uh, please let us know if there's other things you'd like to see from our channel. Uh, we are putting these out there so that others can know what we do. Uh, these, these vlogs are for you guys. So let us know what you'd like to see. And until next time, we're the Reptile Barn. Um. Um.